You gay now? No, I'm not gay. I'm just celibate. I think that sounds gay. Want to know how I know you're gay? You sell beer to men in short skirts. You know how I know that you're gay? How? Because you're gay and you can tell who other gay people are? Because you have a rainbow bumper sticker that says you guzzle, but your electrical vehicle doesn't. What's up, guys? Boy, Benny. We probably have too much time on our hands, but our show considers ourselves the official archivists of the Bud Light boycott and meltdown. And because the Super Bowl is coming up this weekend, we thought we would decide to take a primrose trip down memory lane and show you exactly how this all began. Because actually, it started with the Super Bowl last year, the boycott. I can prove that. Check this out. This is the, the ad. The estimated call time is now less than 96 minutes. Totally fine ad, right? It's a 30 second ad with two Hollywood stars who like dance to the music on a call waiting. All right? Nothing wrong with it. Uh, featuring two stars that like nobody really, you know, not really offensive uh, actors, not super political. A couple like having a Bud Light and dancing to the call waiting music, okay? Ain't nothing wrong with it, actually. Like, it's a totally fine ad. This was Alyssa Heinerschneid's first ad, in fact. Alyssa Heinerschneid, who's been fired now from her disastrous role for hating the customers at Bud Light. But nonetheless, there's nothing wrong with this Super Bowl ad from exactly one year ago. This ad was released exactly one year ago. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I'm playing you this ad is because this is the ad that they went to all their influencers. Dylan Mulvaney was top of the list and said, you need to take that same music, the same call waiting music, and do your own version of that, which is where we got this. The estimated that? call time is now less than same audio. six minutes. Same music, same concept, kind of. Except for instead of having like benign or relatively likable Hollywood actors involved, it is the most despised person on the internet, <laughs> Dylan Mulvaney, dancing in a bathtub. Why do I show you this? Uh, I'm not a glutton for punishment, nor do I wish to project any further into your feed. Um, the humiliation, debauchery, uh, degeneracy, and embarrassment of this moment. I simply wish to remind you that this imagery is what the vast majority of Bud Light boycotters will have in their minds forever when it comes to the product. But Bud Light is pulling out all the stops one year into the boycott that has cost tens of billions of dollars in market cap, that has cost hundreds of millions, if not billions in sales that has cost trillions in brand damage over the life of the brand. Ladies and gentlemen, Bud Light is trying to make it back to the customers by producing new ads and even putting Donald Trump on a can of Bud Light. Ladies and gentlemen, what have we here? A brand new ad campaign from Bud Light for the Super Bowl. The same Super Bowl, the same event, that began the boycott last year, really got rolling during March Madness, but it, it started Dylan Mulvaney's first partner posting relationship with Bud Light started last year at the Super Bowl based on a Super Bowl ad. Now, Bud Light has just revealed and unleashed a brand new Super Bowl ad that not only includes some of the more beloved sports characters in American history, but also some of the most MAGA influencers in American history. Dana White being in this ad. Well, dude, okay. Dana White's walking into UFC uh, with an army at his back, walking side by side, linking arms with Donald Trump and Kid Rock, Tucker Carlson and Don Jr. And now Bud Light's putting him in an ad. Hot damn. So this is their play, this side of a, a of apologizing and putting Donald Trump on a can. This is effectively putting Donald Trump on a can, okay? Struggling Bud Light unveils new Bud Light genie character for $7 million Super Bowl commercial. That includes Peyton Manning, Post Malone, and Dana White as it tries to claw back customers. Ladies and gentlemen, this ad was teased uh, at the beginning of the month. 
like this. Are you? So now they've dropped it. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the full ad, which I believe is going to have its own rejoinder to the Super Bowl, where they'll release the second part of the ad. Um, here's part one. Are you? The Bud Light Genie? Yeah. So we get wishes? It's my thing. Give me. 80s metal hair. Yes. Filthy rich. So filthy. Invisible? Predictable. Giant bicep. Big one. A sweet ride. Best night ever! What's next? Bud Lights? I wish Peyton Manning was my best friend. Uh -huh. How we doing? Hey. Oh, post mom. Hey. I'm a genie. It's Gemini. I'm a genie. Well, look at you. Nope. He's gonna need another bicep. House party. Definitely. Let's go! Uh, Let's go to Super Bowl 58. Uh, we wish for a T-Rex. Guilty. Now we're talking. So how much possible, like, please like us energy can you pump into a single hat? <laughs> now, all of you know that I haven't had a sip of Bud Light. I don't plan on it, quite frankly. I've said publicly, apologize. Apologize to your customers. Start the healing. Put Donald Trump on a can. <laughs> I'll go buy it, actually. You put Donald Trump on a can. Okay. And then you apologize. That'll begin the healing. They've all but done it here. They're literally nibbling right around the edges. But let me like say this as just a simple independent arbiter and somebody who's been following this from the get. Um, they're trying. What you saw there is the absolute polar opposite, truly, culturally, a pivot in 181 degrees from this. It is as different as you can possibly get in our cur current cultural landscape. With the exception of including Kid Rock and Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson in the ad, but they have Dana White in the ad. So I mean, like, they're almost there. <laughs> I mean, this is Dana White walking in with Tucker Carlson, Donald Trump, and Don Jr. Along with Kid Rock into the UFC. You can see the cheering. You can hear the cheering. Ladies and gentlemen, like, you don't get any different. What I also find relatively fascinating is that this is all, this is also a correction on the correction. Okay. I try as hard as I can not to be a sucker for psyops or like glossy ad campaigns, but yo, this is a correction on the correction. They had already a reboot and it didn't go well. Mr. Pfizer was using the reboot. Mr. Travis Kelsey, Mr. Servant of the Regime, Mr. Kneeling for the National Anthem, scumbag, Pfizer boy, was brought in by Bud Light as like a safe option for all the people in front of Madison Avenue who need a safe athlete. But someone is a little edgy. Yeah, it didn't go great. Oh. This is what they produced. Oh, okay, so their customers are fat slobs who can't get up out of chairs. Great job, Bud Light. Yeah, we heard you loud and clear. We heard Alyssa Heinerstein say that the Bud Light customers were out of touch and fratty. So they tried to go out of touch and fratty with Travis Scott. They even paid the Kelsey brothers to drink Bud Lights at a game. Look at this, this is the World Series. They paid these guys to like sit there, look at the Bud Light conspicuously in the shot. Yeah, that's not doing it though. They were called desperate for this and saying like, this is a humiliation. Their first ad out of the gate after the Mulvaney meltdown was this also equally calling their customers complete effing rards. Here we go. Here's the Bud Light ad. We don't wear shoes on hot surfaces. We don't know how to carry stuff. We don't know how to shut fridges. 
We don't know how to get suntans. We don't know how to paddleboard. Our customers are idiots. We don't know how to walk through doors. Our dogs are smarter than us. Oh, we drink Bud Light. We don't know how to like take cover in a tornado. We don't know how to use a hammock. I'm rated. We don't know how to shoot basketballs. We don't know how to tap a keg. We don't know how to catch things. I'm stupid. I should wear a helmet, but I'm wearing a hat. Here I am. I'm a fat white guy, a uh, well, fat old white guy on a cooler. This was their first attempt. Look at this. When was the last time you saw a guy? When was the last time you saw a guy that looked like this at the front of an ad? This shows that the desperation was creeping in. And ladies and gentlemen, now we've officially, officially gotten there. So Bud Light's also produced ads like this with Peyton Manning, obviously, like, you know, Peyton Manning. They, they've done all the, they have enough money to do all the tests and find that like Peyton Manning has never gone political. Peyton Manning is probably well liked by both sides, presumably, because he's just stayed totally analogous uh, and androgynous in his politics. And so uh, they've made, they've gone after guys like Peyton Manning, expect like a Tom Brady possibly to be in there. Um, Tom Brady has worn MAGA hats. That's pretty interesting. Um, but this is what, this is where they're going. They came up with like a couple names, Post Malone, Dana White, Peyton Manning, which is quite fascinating. Now, Dana White, of course, they have paid hundreds of millions of dollars to Bud Light signs partnership with UFC worth hundreds of millions. Our core values align, said Dana White. Well, the core values of Bud Light should be to potentially not lose billions of dollars every single year, which is exactly what happened. So the desperation is officially here. The Super Bowl comeback launch has happened. That is the commercial, but it's not the final commercial. The beleaguered beer brand will air a 60 second commercial at the cost of $14 million. So get ready, get ready. By the way, they're still, they're still, uh, Shutting down all comments on their on their social media, so you can't you can't comment anymore. Something that I wasn't counting on, but something that did happen, and you can let me know what you think about it in the comment section. Donald Trump calls on the Bud Light by boycott to be over. Now, what does this say? I'll just I'll just do a real quick I'll just do a real quick snapshot on this. What this means is we have power. All this does is it's it's just a, like a through line into how much power we actually have. If Donald Trump has to roll through and like call for the end of the boycott, like how powerful are we? Hmm? Says it has paid the price for partnership with Dylan Mulvaney and parent company Anheuser-Busch is a great American brand that deserves a second chance, not actually an American brand. That is incorrect. Bud Light ad was a mistake of epic proportions. Very big price was paid. Anheuser-Busch is not a woke company. I can give you uh, plenty that are. I'm building a list and might just release it to the world to see. Why not? The radical left does it viciously, uh, conservative companies and people. Very nasty. But it's the way that the they play the game. On the other hand, Anheuser-Busch spends $700 million a year on our great farmers, employs 65,000 Americans. It's a lot, actually. And, and of which 1,500 are veteran veterans. Founding corporate partner of Folds of Honor and provides scholarship and so forth. So this is what Trump says. Uh, Anheuser-Busch is a great American brand. Deserves a second chance? What do you think? Perhaps instead we should be going after the companies that are looking to destroy America. There's truth in that, truth social, that Donald Trump uh, posted. But I remain, ladies and gentlemen, firmly in the boycott camp. Doesn't really matter to me. Partners with Dana White, whatever. Doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. Okay, I can't be influenced out of it because it was never about uh, influence from the right telling me what to do. That was the game in the first place. The reason why I remain boycotting Bud Light, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, is because now it's time for me to influence them. It's time for us to influence corporate America and to make this so painful, so harsh, so savage, so cutthroat and potentially like does that like end the company that they will never ever do this again? 
So it was never about Trump necessarily. It was about Dana White or the UFC. It was only ever about us proving a point and taking a scalp. And therefore, uh, I don't think my point's thoroughly been made because there are still ESG, DEI and all these companies. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I continue my boycott and I encourage you to do so as well. It's your boy, Benny. Like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. See ya.